Right, watch out. Welcome back. Uh, Project Bandit Spray Guard number eight, which I think is cool. We've got right there now. It's been over a week now. This is number eight, and I'm looking forward to getting this nailed together. I've made four pieces uh, into three, and I'm going to try tonight to make three pieces into two. What I mean by that is I've got each side mount, I've got a little cage at thing, and I've got the mud guard itself made of fiberglass, and they're now into three because the cage thing's in one. I've now got three bits, got to weld them together, and hopefully then it's done. Now, Obviously, my number plate is very slightly obscured by this offside, the right hand side of the cage is obscuring the number plate, and that won't do. The powers that be won't tolerate that. Small number plates, normally you can get away with here. Uh, I know you can't elsewhere, and I know you still can get a ticket for them, but it's one of the biggest tolerances there is. I'd say 50% of bikes these days in this area, certainly, and in most areas, have five by seven smaller number plates. Um, it's one of the tolerances you get. It's kind of a nice little thing they let you away with. But if you're obscuring it, that's a different matter. They're going to take you to task on that and you're going to get a fine at the worst. So I don't want that. I'm going to have to move the plate very slightly. I'm going to put the cage in place and I am going to look at two things. One is whether or not to put the plate on the back of the spray guard. I know everybody said about that. Yes, I know, but I kind of like the side mount. So I'm going to see if the side mount will work. If not, then it will go on the back, one or the other, but that's going to be at the end of the project for now. I'm just going to whip it off and get the frame done for this right hand side this offside meaning if you right drive on the left the right is the offside you know what i mean anyway there we are number eight stick around stay tuned let's see what happens all right as this is the most challenging of the two sides um taking the plate off i may put um plates there now i may go upright because obviously as i had it there it's being obscured from the rear quite a bit and that won't do so as I said it may be that I just go don't know up that way but you'd have to get another plate made because they have to be the correct way up we can't have our sideways like you can in the states um that just be w at the top then the three then the three look um motocross plates blah 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 anyway now if this I've got a bolt on properly there's a fastener down the inside of there just going to bolt that on nice and tight bolt these in Nice and home, bolt them home, nice and stiff and tight. Make sure that's firmly bolted on in place. And then I've got to take some wire from here down to there. And obviously there's a lot of offset, so it's got to come in at the same time. Now, what I've been left with after the fabrication of all this is one of those, which is uh, one length of the rod. That's a four foot length, which was just the uprights and a few little bits which are there um, plus loads of other little off cuts and noggins which I always tend to keep uh, you never know what for so I've got to cut a little bit of that up after I've bolted that on and then just bend them in you'll see what I'm going to do and this is the most challenging side this side is way easier it's just got to come straight off there straight onto there so I'll save the easy bit for last and get on with this tonight the other side of it is if I am going to have a plate there I want it coming over the plate or at least to a side where it's not in the way so da 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 Got to get on with this. Okay, that's it. First. Right. Beef. All right. Okay. Now that's beef. Obviously, putting that on there where I want it and then welding it in place is going to be no good because you can you spot the deliberate mistake obviously it's touching it needs to be spaced off the back of the tire so it's not going to get caught in it or have any issues fouling or anything like that so the easiest way to do that I'm going to use the old traditional method it goes back to way back of what what you do when you're spacing a fender on a chopper or a hardtail you simply pop a couple of lengths of tubing on the tire at just to either side of the center line or symmetry and if you coil it up for a few days then effectively it stays coiled in its position so you end up with it kind of hugging the tire a bit like this it works quite well and this hose will give a constant space all the way around Right, so with a couple of little kinks just added with a spanner, 
just to twist those outwards, just to move these two joints away from the nobbles. I'm also going to, I'm just not quite sure that in this instance with the aggressive nature of the knobbly tyres, at speed, if they catch that inside, they just might crack it. So just as a safety measure, I'm going to add another 10 mil. So that's given, if I come like that, I've got a whole inch of gap between the top of the nobbles and the face of the mud guard. So that will just get and snuck that in there as a full spacer and also it gives me a bit more clearance on this as well there proper bit of clearance now get fingering behind that which is fine now it's going to come at the base level with the back of the tire so wheel spindle back of the tires there a couple of inches above that's fine come down a bit about a couple of inches above. So it just wants to be two inches or so above the horizontal center of the tire. That's where the water starts to part company. As it comes up, the tire starts to rotate back on itself. That's where the water parts company with the tire. It starts to spray upwards and that's where this is going to catch it. So to hold that in place, I'm just going to use the bungees. So just a little bit of final shifting about because once once the weld a single piece on that's where it stays and that's gonna be that's no that's no closer than a front mud guard or front fender on your bike would be so that's correct happy with that and these little wires once it's all done in place I can just bend them out a little bit further if I need to right it's more of this old business again I'll make a little curve first of all to follow the line of the frame. Right. Quite cool doing a sort of multi faceted. different bends, different directions. Need a 90 degree kink there. Oops. Quite noisy. 89 and a half. There you go. That's 90. One hit. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Is that 90 or what? 90. Actually, it's more. But so far. <laughs> That comes, there's four little bits of, four bends, sorry, on one little bit of rod. Uh, and the extra bends, making more bends in it makes it stronger. Bending it through 90 that way, then 90 that way, gives it infinitely more strength than if it went straight from A to B. That is just the way it works. A straight piece of rod flexes more than a curved or bent one. So that's going to weld along the top of that sheet metal, which is easy. Just tack that in and then up uh, underneath there and along the back on this inside so that it's stronger gives it a little bit of beef okay, so let that one tacked in first and then see where the next one looks like it needs to come from first one i've got the wire speed turned down so that i can and the power down so that I can dwell on it for quite a long time and let the heat saturate right in and get good penetration, hopefully.
that's just paint burning off um, that I didn't grind out of the way. Still, there we go. about 30 degree in that. I'm working with this at full length before cutting. I was going to chop it in half and then I know you'll chop it right where you need it to be the same length. Chinese puzzle. One. Free it one more. Take the next one in. Okay, time to weld in the third one. Struggling with this because it's sheet metal and metal bar. 
and it's always what I end up doing. All these things I fabricate, I end up making them out of a combination of bar and sheet. And you've got, you, you can either have it too hot and it burns through the sheet, or not enough and it's not penetrating the bar. Um, I don't want to blow holes in it, but at the same time, I've got to get it to penetrate enough to stay there. I don't want the world popping off. Bending up the last rod, the last of the four, and it's shockingly strong already, really is, you, you can't move it at all, it's really stiff, so that's quite a nice little turnout. Which is good, and when a plan comes together. Clean up. Pretty much what I had in mind. I kind of like it when it looks how I expected it to look. Um, these welds down here, we've had, I've had, we, I've had uh, issues like all these things. I built a, uh, a, an air cleaner for a Harley, um, a, a, a um, <laughs> monkey boy, a spoiler for my old iron, and it's always the same. It's welding bar to sheet. And the problem with that is, if you're a welder, you know, it's there is a technique, and I'm not a welder, so it's something I've yet to master properly, but you dwell on the rod, which can take more heat, and then you just tap. So you kind of dwell on the rod, and then you just flick as you go along onto the sheet. If you dwell on the sheet, you blow holes in it, like that, and where are we? Down there. So there's little holes, little pinholes where I've just popped through, but it shows you're getting the maximum amount of heat on it, I guess. But I've loads of ugly old bus tacks on there. Yuck. And loads and loads of weld down there. And what it's done, it's kind of given me a little bit of a extension of those delicate rods going forward, uh, just picking up the sheet metal. So there we are. That's the right inside. It's going to be done a little bit more yet. Um, I'm going to roll one inside, I think, as a brace, and I'm going to probably brace up the inside of the sheet metal later on, just purely to make it strong enough to take whatever flexage is going to come from that in the future. But I may wait to see if it needs it before I do. And other things like from here, this bottom edge, I may take something up, just visually, I don't know, whatever. But here we are. That's it. That's the main construction of the right-hand side. I can do the other side tomorrow night, and then it is welded into one lump. And all I've got to do after that is take it off, clean it all up, brace anything that needs it, adjust and dress anything to one side if it needs symmetry -ifying. That's pretty symmetrical as it is. And, uh, and then paint it. 
so there we go that's been number eight there you go right it'd be nice to think that this one only go to ten and no more but i've learned never to count on that uh purely because it doesn't work when you start doing that but there's a couple more one for the left hand side and one for paintage so it's quite possible i could get this done within 10 videos this is the eighth one don't know you never know and that's it thanks for watching always appreciate the support i'm going to go in and render this now and get it online so ride safe take it easy see you for the next one